Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to look at a question that came from Tommy Moore, WB5BNT. Um, and it's about uh, lightning arresters again. Um, he says he has two spark detector circuit breakers on the AC power into the bedroom where I have my shack. Um, there's been a lot of complaints from people about the latest and greatest um, breakers that go in your utility service box uh, that they're easily tripped uh, by lots of things. Um, he says when he transmits on 20 meters using more than 50 watts input the breakers trip. Um, now this is a common problem. It's because you're getting RFI, your radio transmitted radio signal is getting into the house wiring. Okay, so that's what it is. It says, before I replace them with regular circuit breakers, don't. Because this is a safety item. They're there for a reason. Okay, uh, do you have any ideas what I can do to protect them from RF? Now you've got to get the RF out of your house, okay. Um, Breakers are required by code. There's a reason for that, okay? Uh, it's because it protects people. Um, I know we have a problem with the circuit breaker that goes to our bedroom. We have a ceiling lamp in there, and sometimes when you turn it off, there's a little bit of a, since there's inductance in the motors in the ceiling fan, you get a little bit of a, a kickback, a reactive kickback which can be big enough to create a spark, which will trip the breaker. So every once in a blue moon, we have to go reset that breaker. Um, so, and you know, just what to do when that goes out. Okay, uh, let's, let's, let's look at this. You've got RF in the house. Now you do not, you do not talk about your, um, your grounding system at all. Your rig should be grounded to a spot in your uh, shack. You've got maybe a tuner here, also grounded, a power supply, also grounded. And then from here, this goes outside to your um, ground rod. And this attaches here with a compression fit type of a connector. This should also be all compression fit. I use hose clamps to do this. Don't solder anything that can in any way be affected by lightning. Um, and then all my uh, coaxes come in to lightning arresters. Uh, these are Alpha Delta lightning arresters. Um, I'll call them surge protectors. This is really what they are. There's a little gas discharge tube in there. It'll spark over if there's a uh, high voltage on here. And then ground it. And these will ground uh, lightning. And here's your antenna here. Okay. Now, um, you've got to make sure you've got this properly grounded. Okay. Uh, your shack needs to be grounded in this manner. This is best practice. This is the way to do it. Now your utility ground is over here where you've got your electric meter and you've got one wire coming from here. And this is the only place in the house where the neutral, which is the white wire, and the green wire ground connect right here. And then you've got your green wire. Uh, oft times it's bare. Uh, but it's usually called the green wire ground. And then you've got your hot over here. And this goes to all your circuits in the house. These two need to be connected. That's called bonding. Again, compression fit, compression fit, or welded. You can get little thermite uh, devices that you put around the ground wad a rod and you put your wire in here and you light it on fire and it will burn and eventually give you a copper weld so copper to copper welded with copper uh, between them 
Uh, be sure that you don't do these right next to the house, especially next to anything that can burn, because they'll shoot flames about this high, and you can set your house on fire doing that. Don't do that, okay? This bonding wire must be outside the house. Do not run lightning anything inside the house. This right here penetrates the wall of your home somewhere here and goes outside. You don't put these where they can get in the house. Now, if you bond this way, that means that this and this will be at the same voltage, okay? Now, especially your bonding needs to be number six copper, and I would strongly recommend burying it, and it should be bare wire. I recommend stranded because stranded has a much greater surface area, which means it'll carry RF better, okay? Um, but they need to be bonded. If you have a ground like this, okay, the chances that you will have RFI issues are very small, okay? If you do continue to run into problems with this, call the manufacturer of that breaker because you've got a defective breaker. It shouldn't go off when it's got RF like this, okay? But you've got to have done this first before you start writing to the breaker manufacturer and saying they've got some bad breakers, they're in your house and you want replacements that actually work, okay? And they may give you other ideas for grounding. This is best practice for grounding. You really need to do this in your house. And if this isn't bonded, now you might say, but when I'm bonded, I'm gonna get the noise from here and here. Actually, no, um, because this being buried between here acts kind of like a ground rod-ish thing, the fact that it's buried and so on. Now, if you really want to get fancy, about every 10 or 12 feet, you can put another grounding rod here, and these should be welded um, underground. If you're welded underground, they'll stay okay. If you've got a compression connection underground, it can corrode with time. So. That way, what you would leave your ground rod about that high above the ground, run your bonding wire and compression connection. Okay, and they make compression connections for ground rods. Go down and look at your electrical supply at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. You'll find all sorts of gadgets to do that. But you've got an RFI problem here, okay? And see if something like this, if you've already done this much, make sure that you're grounded. Um, if that doesn't work, put in extra ground rods every 12 feet and uh, so on. Okay, so there you go. I hope that helps you. I realize that RFI problems can be extremely frustrating. Try moving your coax around. Try moving your single point ground two feet. Try rearranging your shack, something, anything to get this uh, problem to go away. Because you should be able to go a full 100 watts with that, or more, in a situation like this without tripping the breakers, okay? So there you have it. I hope that helps. Uh, let's see, I think we've got, uh, um, yeah, now the breakers are required by code. And if you ever do an update to your electrical, like I just did, I. Uh, ran some wiring, well, I didn't do it, the electrician did, ran some wiring out to a shack we use for Loretta's uh, art studio so we could put a better air conditioner out there. It's been so hot this year. The earliest I've ever seen it snow in Colorado is in September. Not this September. We were having very, very warm days. When we first moved down here in 20... Oh, 2003, we'd rarely get a 90 degree day. Um, and the most heat was in August, and then it would break mid-August and we'd start into the fall weather pattern. Boy, that is sure not true now. Uh, for the last couple summers, we've had many 90 degree days, and uh, we're at 7,000 feet. I don't know that it's actually ever gone above 100 
here since we've been here, but it certainly has in Montrose just down the road. We went on a trip to Salt Lake uh, just to get out of the house, stayed at the KOA in Salt Lake. It was 105 to 110 the whole time we were there. We were shut up inside that trailer and couldn't really do anything. It was misery. So we left early. <laughs> um, in any event, there you go. Uh, let's see. I talked to you about the giveaway. We've got a giveaway going uh, for a micro BITX radio. Uh, please send me a postcard, QSL card, or a single sheet of paper in an envelope to Dave Kessler, KE0OG, giveaway number three. Um, and do this before mid-October, okay? So that the post office, which is getting ridiculously slow, uh, can actually get the mail to me. Uh, no electronic entries are accepted. Um, and I need your name, call sign, your uh, shipping address, and your phone number. Okay, that's all you need to put on it. QSL card. Now, if you happen to send me a picture of your shack, I'll show that uh, on the air the night of the uh, drawing. Okay, so until we next meet, 73.